everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Cafe. My name is Isaac, and we are back playing some Feed the Beast Infinity for episode 28. Now, at the end of last episode, we set up this pretty nifty contraption over here, the combination of reinforced obsidian and the killer Joe, which now allows us to place down soul sand and wither skeleton skulls within it and have it automatically kill the wither that spawns. And we can just go in there and collect up all of the stuff that the wither drops, which is pretty freaking awesome and has resulted in me acquiring five nether cubes since the end of last episode, all of which we are going to try and use today. And hopefully, by the end of the episode will have used now the first thing that i'm going to make with these nether cubes is something that i saw a couple of people commenting about in the comment section of the last video and they were kind of right about me making it but hopefully by the end of this episode this item that we're about to make whilst a really good item will become completely redundant because we'll have a much better item and that item is the angel ring this guy over here is added by extra utilities and basically is it says invisible wings it basically gives you creative mode flight which is pretty flippant awesome and to, to mimic that it's kind of hard to make you require two glass four gold a nether cube obviously and then two of these unstable ingots which are made by taking an iron ingot a division sigil and a diamond now the little caveat that comes along with these unstable ingots is that if we go ahead and kind of hover over them in here it says this ingot will is highly unstable and will explode after 10 seconds it will explode after 10 seconds so i believe we have to use a vanilla crafting table in order to make those unstable ingots so let's go ahead and grab some wood and do something like this Take this guy. We're then going to need some glass. Make sure it's normal glass. Uh, I have tried this before with uh, like Tinker's glass or some other kind of glass. It doesn't work. Don't try it. You'll just end up exploding with the, uh, the unstable ingots there. We're also going to need some gold which shouldn't be too hard to get. And, of course, the nether cubes, which we have. And then, of course, the uh, the cherry on top is the two diamonds, the two iron, and our activated division sigil. Now, uh, the division sigil does have to be activated. We activated ours quite a while back when we got the cursed earth. But uh, if you're going to try this, make sure it's activated. Otherwise, it just will not work. And, basically, we have to do something like this. Now, we're going to be fast. <laughs> we've got to be really fast. I'm actually going to put these up here kind of for speed of access. And I'm hoping that'll be fine. Let's make sure we've got this recipe down. Glass, glass, gold 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 nether cube okay so we put this here this here this here we take one two no no oh i do it every time i do it every time no 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 oh 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 we got it Oh my gosh, I got scared then. I got scared then. But look at this. Oh my gosh, we don't have our jetpack on. And we just have creative mode flight just from having this thing on us, which is kind of awesome. We can fly outside at night. We can just ignore this spider. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? We got creative mode flight. And to be really cool, you can go ahead and just stick this thing in the baubles menu right about there. And it should still go. Ooh. Yeah, it should still grant you a creative mode flight. I thought I'd change that, but it hasn't. So for the angel ring to work, it just has to either be in your inventory or in this little slot on the baubles menu there, both of which are fine and both of which will grant you full creative mode flight forever and ever, as long as you have it on you, which is kind of cool. Now, the reason that I made this guy, and like I said, it's going to be kind of redundant by the end of the episode, is because today what I want to do is I want to go to the end. And in order to get to the end, well, once we've got to the end, should I say, we're going to have to fight the end dragon because there is a reason resource in the end that's going to allow us to get into draconic evolution and that resource is draconic dust let's have a look draconic evolution this thing over here the draconic the draconium dust uh, is got by mining this stuff up here the draconium ore which is found most commonly in the end it is found a little bit in the overworld but it's very very rare uh, as opposed you'll see we have do have a little bit draconic we have one <laughs> in here um, but mostly it's in the end and in order to make what i want to make today we are going to need about 260 of this draconic dust, which is kind of crazy, especially considering that we have one. So we're going to go to the end. We're going to fight the end dragon. Then we're going to go get some of this draconic dust. Now, to fight the end dragon, I figured having created mode fly would make it a lot easier. We don't have to deal with any of the hostile mobs on the floor. But now in order to actually beat the end dragon, we're going to need some form of tool. I think for the, for the time being, I'm going to try and use this obsidian broadsword. It's not the strongest thing in the world, but we can go ahead and just repair it like this. I've been using this a bunch since the end of last episode to kill more wither skeletons, obviously, to get these uh, these nether cubes. And then, of course, in order to get some of that draconic dust, we need a pickaxe. Now, the draconium dust is kind of like a redstone, diamonds, lapis, in that it gives you a random number of dust every time you break the block. And that random number can be higher if you happen to have a pickaxe with fortune on it. So, what we're going to do is, first of all, I'm going to grab some paper. 
because we're going to need some. And we are going to make a pickaxe. So we want to go to the uh, part builder, which is this guy over here. We're going to make pretty much a whole obsidian uh, pickaxe, just because obsidian is kind of easy to make. And again, we're going to do the rod and the pickaxe head out of obsidian. And then the binding, again, is going to be made out of paper to give us that extra modifier like we did last episode with the sword. Over to the tool station, we can go ahead and just go pickaxe. Boom, boom, and boom. And that will get us an obsidian pickaxe. Nice. Now, in order to make this uh, look here, in order to give it fortune uh, in Tigger's Construct, you have to add lapis. Now, lapis, we don't have a ton. <laughs> Not gonna lie, we have very little in terms of lapis. And you need a heck of a lot of lapis in order to get up to kind of uh, fortune three levels of lapis. Hopefully, we have a little bit more over in our quarry that's running in our miscraft age. I'm not quite sure how much we have, but this creative mode flight is beautiful. I absolutely love it. Um... We have a little bit more. We have about another two stacks, which is kind of nice. We'll have seven more diamonds. That I love. And we'll also take some of this redstone as well, because we are going to be throwing redstone onto our pickaxe as well, because adding redstone increases the speed at which our pickaxe can mine, which, when we're in the end fighting hostile mobs all the time, is going to be very, very useful. So, much like with the quartz, we're going to add it on blocks at a time, like so... Okay, so a little while later, adding the lapis has taken us up to Fortune 2 on our Obsidian Pick. You can see right there at the bottom, it says just above Tinker's Construct, Fortune 2. We did have to throw 303 lapis onto this pick to get up to Fortune 2, which is kind of insane. We're almost at the max 450, but we are out of lapis pretty much. We have a little bit left. Uh, getting into the max 450 does give you Fortune 3, which would be a lot nicer, but unfortunately, we don't have enough lapis to get there. So instead, what we're going to do now is we're going to use another one of our three remaining modifiers to give ourselves speed. Adding redstone on is works in pretty much the exact same way but it's going to give us speed instead now it's a bit of a pain trying to add redstone because it doesn't always add up nicely but we should be able to do something like this and we are almost there on the first modifier done so at 50 out of 50 we've used up one modifier i am going to go ahead and use up another mo another modifier just 100 percent for redstone because we want speed to be like the fastest it can possibly be when it comes to mining this stuff in the end because i do not at all want to be there trying to fight stuff whilst i'm mining this stuff here so we'll take you we'll take you and we'll throw one more on there boom and that takes it up to what's it take it up to mining speed da -da 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 -da. It doesn't tell me. It's just to tell me here. 16.12, which is a pretty high mining speed. I'm not going to lie. If we go outside here and kind of look at mining something, we should see that it's very, very fast indeed. Let's have a look here. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Slightly faster than diamond pick, which is very, very nice. And then finally, of course, the last thing that we're going to have to do is get to the end. And the way we're going to do that is the good old traditional way, which, uh, fun fact, I have actually never done before. I've never been to the end, uh, the good old-fashioned traditional way, which is using uh, the Eyes of Ender here. So we're going to take that. We're going to make a bunch of Eyes of Ender. And then we just throw them, I believe. Uh, throw them out into the distance and then follow them all the way to the end portal. Something like this yeah the last i think i've only beaten the ender dragon twice and like one of the times it was with in like feed the beast monster i just i used just a portal that somebody had set up somewhere so uh, i have no idea let's have a look here let's throw this thing up okay we're going this way all right so i'm gonna follow this thing guys i have no idea how long it's gonna take but i will see you when we reach i guess either the end fortress or the end portal Okay, so this is it. This is the Ender Dungeon, I guess. I'm not quite sure what it's called, but... I oh, look at this. Oh, my gosh. It's, like, broken and destroyed. I guess what we're going to have to do now is kind of just wander around and try and find this thing. Okay, so for whatever reason, I'm not quite sure why, but after, like, half an hour of searching around this End Dungeon, I'm going to call it, the End Portal's down here, of all places. Not quite sure what the heck's up with that, but without further ado... But oh, we've got creative mode. There we go. Let's go through and let's see. we got an achievement to the End. If we can go after. Okay, not really what I was expecting. Not really useful, but quite nice the fact that we have the ability to fly. So that would be the end dragon. Uh, we don't have to fight them all yet. What we're after is this stuff. This is what we're after. Draconic Dust. We need about four stacks of this stuff. So this could take us a while. What I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to fly around for now. Uh, I'm going to occasionally kind of take out one of these uh, healing crystals from the end dragon like that and try not to die in the process as well as try and grab as much of this draconic dust as I can. And yeah. Okay, so we died. <laughs> we died. Uh, probably to be expected. We, um, 
We died. <laughs> all right. However, I have an idea. So we did manage to take out all the crystals, and we also managed to get a lot of the Draconium dust that we needed. We actually got more than enough, I think, without having to actually touch the dragon, which was kind of surprising. But what I think I'm going to do this time around is go ahead and make another miscraft book that's going to allow us to come back to the Earth. So what we can do is go back to the end. Oh, jeez. Look at this guy. Look at that guy. We're going to take our jetpack, which is over here. We're going to go to the end. I might get some more iron armor on. Once we get to the end, I'm going to go find my gravestone, break it, and then instantly come home using the Mistcraft book. And hopefully we won't even have to fight the dragon at all. So that's my plan. I'm going to go do that, guys. And I'll be back in a second. Okay, we've got our Mistcraft book. Here we go. Take two. There should be a waypoint where we died. And there is. Is it H to go into hover mode? No, that's hat's menu. Okay. I'm going to try, oh, nope, okay, Enderman. I was going to say I'm going to try and get there as fast as I can without using a jetpack. I have no idea how much jetpack juice we have left. Hopefully, oh, no, 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 no. Not dying to you again. Not even a little bit, please. There we go, it's trying to kill us. I need my stuff. Okay, okay. I want to get as much as I can. I don't want to die again. I don't know why those endermen are pissed. Yep. That's enough for me. Here we go. <laughs> oh, we did it. We did it. We got all four stacks of Draconium Dust. We made it back to the overworld without having to fight the dragon. That is absolutely beautiful. Okay, so now that we've got ourselves all four stacks of this Draconium Dust, the first thing that we're going to make is this guy over here. The Draconic Chest. This guy is made using a furnace. Boom. Done. Uh, it's made using a lot more stuff than just a furnace. We need a crafting table. Again, take you and throw you up there. We need two of these obsidian chests, which are made using a bunch of other chests. So we're going to have to go ahead and get some oak. Make ourselves two normal chests. Upgrade those two normal chests to, to iron chests. Upgrade those two iron chests to gold chests. Gold to diamond. Diamond to obsidian. And that process looks something like this. Two of these. One two then we need some iron like so one and a two then we need some gold hopefully i think we have enough gold we do we can go ahead and do another one two of those one two then gold to diamond i think only requires two diamonds and some glass i think it's like diamond 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 and then glass in the top and bottom maybe it is. Look at that. Beautiful. Look at me knowing all the recipes. And then obsidian is just all obsidian. Okay, that's fair enough. We have a bunch of obsidian, so we should be fine with that. Boom, boom, and done. Look at that. Two obsidian chests. We can throw those back in the AE system. And then all we need is some of these draconic uh, ingots, some of these draconium ingots, which are made by smeltering draconium blend. So we're going to have to make two of these, one and two. Now, this is the inefficient way of doing it, but we can't do it the efficient way until we have the chest. So the inefficient way is to smelt one blend into two ingots. Like that, which basically means that two dust equals one ingot, because it takes four dust to make one blend, which makes two dust. So you, you get the idea. And, and then what we could do is if we go ahead and make ourselves one of these draconic cores, which is some more of this stuff and a diamond, I'm actually going to need to make uh, two more of that blend. Now I think about it. Here we go. Let's do that one more time. One and one, two, three, four. Like so. Last time we should have to do it the inefficient way. Boom and boom. And then once that's done... Which it should be right about now. We should be able to go ahead and make ourselves a chest. Nice. This draconic chest is flipping fantastic. I've had so many people in the comment section for like the last, all of the series telling me to make this thing. I'm going to put it down. Uh, actually, I'm going to put it down over here for now because it does need power. So actually, our big reactor is out of, actually out of power right now. And we don't actually have any more Eulorium. So I guess for the time being, it's going to go down over here like this. And we're going to have to make that right side there an output. Like that. Boom. That is how big the Draconic Chest is. Let me just quickly show you. Uh, if you have your GUI scale on auto, which is what it's like to default, it's flipping massive. Now, I like to turn my uh, GUI scale here down just a little bit to, uh, to large. And it doesn't quite fill the page as much. But basically, what we can do now is go ahead and make ourselves a ton of this blend. Grab some iron 
and just I'm gonna throw all these in here like that and just do something like this one two three and four and we're gonna grab as much of it as we can not ingots what the heck are you doing we're gonna grab as much of it as we can which is apparently 60 and then if we were to go ahead and throw this into the draconic chest which acts as a chest a crafting table and a furnace we throw it in the furnace section it's gonna go ahead and start to turn that up and it turns one into four as opposed to one into two so you get one ingot per dust as opposed to where uh, at uh, one ingot per two dust, which is a much better trade and uh, much more efficient. And look at this, we're getting a ton of these draconium ingots. Now, what exactly did I want all this draconium ingotness for? Well, that is a good question. And in fact, the answer to that question is flipping badass armor. So if we were to go ahead and look at the draconic evolution mod, I want this armor here. I want the woven, woven, yoven. You have a chest plate? The, the Yevon set of armor. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing that right. I'm probably not. I never really pronounce things right. But this is made using a ton of draconium ingots. A ton. I say a ton. As well as a bunch of gold, a bunch of diamonds, and a bunch of redstone. And basically, just a ton of this draconium ingot stuff. So, what I think I'm going to do is to make this a little bit easier we are gonna have to go ahead we don't have enough diamonds to start with to make all of this because in order to make just the the, the, the diamond chest plate and the full set of diamond armor in order to upgrade it to this armor we need 24 diamonds which we don't have um and then we have to go ahead and use a couple more diamonds to make all of these cores we need like one oh my gosh what do we need one two three four uh, we need like 24 plus like another 16 we need like 40 30 40 diamonds which we don't have I think we might need 30. I'm hoping 30 is the right number. We have 17. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to our Miscraft age and see how much coal we've got. If we have about 13 stacks of coal, we might be able to make a bunch of diamonds using all of that coal. Uh, which is going to be, it's going to take a while. It's going to be a lot of compressing, a lot of industrial craft, but... We should be able to do it. So let's go ahead and just take all of this stuff. Let's get rid of some of this junk that we don't need. We'll take all of you. And let's see if we have enough stuff to do it. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to go away. I'm going to make a butt ton more diamonds using this coal. Uh, I should have to do it in the uh, I think last episode. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to do that, guys. I'll be back in a second. Okay, so hours later, even after turning all of our coal into diamonds using the compressor, which I moved over here uh, just for the power because I wanted to put six overclockers in there, this got us 14 diamonds, which still wasn't enough. So I went ahead and started mining for a while with my new fortune pickaxe. I managed to get about six or seven more, seven more, whilst I was down in the mines there. And I also, of course, left the quarry running for that time. So hopefully we have at least a, a couple more diamonds in here, which should be able to take us to the 24 that we need to uh, set up this armor so let's see we got six more i love it i love it i'm also gonna take this coal just in case in the redstone i think as well we are running a lot of redstone because we need like 10 blocks of redstone to get this stuff up and running but hopefully we should not be able to make this work so uh, i do apologize this video will be going up a day late now because i, I kind of missed the time uh, to upload it by waiting this long for the diamonds but we should have enough so i went ahead and made 13 draconic cores now we can go ahead and make the few more that we need. We need 16 of these in total. So one, two, three. That's all 16. Now we should be able to make four of these. There we go. And then we should have 24 diamonds left. We do. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Okay. Here we go. Here goes nothing. Diamond chest plate looks something like this. Leggings look something like this. Helmet looks something like this. And then, of course, boots look something like this. And finally, we can throw all of these into the AE system and make ourselves a helmet. Watch now, we run out of ingots. A helmet, some boots. There we go. A chest plate. Boom. And finally, the leggings. Boom. There we go. And we still have... 98 almost 100 over 100 draconian ingots left which is pretty awesome now these oh actually went on redstone flux which is something i didn't actually know um so i guess what we have to do is charge these up which is going to be super fun <laughs> because it's going to take forever to charge these up in this basic capacitor bank but that's fine we'll throw that on top of there like that that should start to fill up pretty quickly if we make the top of that an output there we go and that's just going to drain it like instantly drain it um okay so what i'll do is i'll put actually i think i can put them all in there but that's not gonna do anything i'm gonna charge them all up just a little bit to kind of show you what they can do and then i'll probably go ahead and charge them all up fully 
between episodes. But hopefully, just by chising up a little bit here, we should be able to, uh, to just show you what these things do. So, like I said, this flying angel ring is now going to become obsolete. We don't need it. Get rid of it. Don't need our jetpack anymore. Get rid of it. Don't really need our iron armor anymore. Can get rid of that. If we throw all these on, looks a bit weird, but look at this. Look how fast we run for a start. And then if we double tap space, we should, should fly. Not quite sure if we're running out of uh, juice or whatnot, but I'm pretty sure this thing gives the ability to fly. Okay, so I even went ahead and filled up my armor completely just to see if I was doing something wrong, but apparently it doesn't. I thought it had creative flight, but apparently it doesn't. That's fine. What we can do now is actually go ahead and use our angel ring, which means we didn't waste an ender, uh, another star at all. We can go ahead and throw this thing back like so. And look at that. Boom. We've got creative mode flight, and we can move so fast. It is absolutely beautiful. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. It was very, very, very expensive, very time-consuming. But I love being able to move fast like this. I'll be able to fly. Both of these have been accomplished now. If we were to take this off and just move normally again, look at this. We move so slowly. <laughs> No, never again, never, ever, ever again. But with that, guys, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please hit like, and I will see you next time.